Cashcat! <laughs> We're back! So welcome back everybody to the Bitcoin Day Trader channel and today I'm gonna teach you guys how to use Hashcat on Bitcoin wallets. Hashcat is a hashing program. It's a brute force program that is able to try passwords on hashes to figure out the password for the hash. And in this case, we're gonna make a hash file out of our wallet file and we're gonna import that hash file into Hashcat and use it to figure out our password using a brute force. <laughs> Hedgehog! So what do we need? Let's start with our wallet. So we can use this technique on a Litecoin Core wallet, on a Bitcoin Core wallet, Doggy Coin, or other coins on coins that look a lot like Bitcoin. And you need the wallet.dat file. And most coins create a wallet.dat file. What we're gonna do is we're gonna change the password. And let's change it to something very, very simple because it's just to get the main idea. So I'm gonna use a very short passphrase. Let's call it bit. Let's back up this wallet first. So we need a wallet.dat file. Let's do that to our desktop. Wallet.dat. There is the wallet.dat file. We can shut down the Bitcoin Core wallet now because we don't need it anymore because we have a backup of our wallet on our desktop. We need to find Hashcat. So we gotta go to the internet. Let's go to hashcat.net. I only know how to do this with a older version of Hashcat. So not the newest version, because I tried that and I failed. We need to use an older version. So you just scroll down, scroll down. I'm using version 4.1, not 4.2. So you gotta find the Hashcat binaries 4.1 and click on this download here. Let's download and save it to our desktop. What else do we need? We need Python, because we're gonna use a Python script to change our wallet.dat file, which is an encrypted file, to a hashing file that Hashcat can read, because Hashcat cannot read a wallet.dat file. If you wanna use a wallet.dat file and make it a little bit easier, I suggest using the BTC Recover, because BTC Recover is way faster in brute forcing than Hashcat. And I have a bunch of tutorials on the subject, so you should definitely check that out, because it's way easier than Hashcat. But this is just a tutorial to let you guys know how to use Hashcat on a wallet.dat file. Before we can make our wallet.dat file into a hashing file, we need a small Python script. And we need Python 2.7 to execute the script. So we gotta go to python.org and let's go to all releases. Python 2.7.15 and let's download that. Here are all the files. We need the Windows 64-bit version here in the bottom. And let's save that to our desktop. We need to have this script called Bitcoin to John. And it's called Bitcoin to John because there is a hashing program kind of like Hashcat and it's called John the Ripper. I can show you guys John the Ripper. This is a hashing program kind of like Hashcat, but we're not going to use it today because I'm not really familiar with it. And I wanted to show you guys how to do it in Hashcat. John the Ripper is CPU based and Hashcat is GPU based. So that's the main difference between the two. So John the Ripper uses your processor and Hashcat uses your video card. We're not gonna use John the Ripper, but we need a script, a Python script, and it's called Bitcoin to John.py. We gotta search for Bitcoin to John.py. Our first one is a good one. So let's just go to the GitHub. You see this script here, so this is the script. What I usually do is I collect the raw data, so I press raw, select it all press ctrl c to copy a couple of times i am going to make a new file on our background it's a text document i use notepad plus plus so that's this i don't know what it is a gecko and let's call it the bitcoin to john.py not the txt and press enter okay so in some situations you guys might not be able to do this this changing txt to dot pi and if you want to be able to do this you got to go to your control panel go to start type control panel just c-o-n-t and then you get it you got to go to your file explorer options and you got to make sure that you have height extension for known file types unchecked because if it is checked let me show you what's going to happen if i apply this it only says bitcoin to john it is a bitcoin to john.py but if we would write dot pi now it would be named bitcoin to john.py.py we want to be able to change it so we have to uncheck this apply and then you will see the dot pi and dot msi in this case and dot 7z if this is checked you cannot change it but we want to change our text file to a python file so make sure that this is unchecked 
So you have your .py file. You open your .py file. I use Notepad++. It's an open source editor. And press Ctrl V to paste that script that we have just found here on GitHub. Okay, so we've pasted the script. Let's save this script. And this is our Bitcoin to John script. So we need this script and this script will change your wallet file into a hashing file. It's still not open. It's just changing the wallet to a hash that can be brute forced. If you just want to use the wallet, use BTC Recover. It's a way better program for Bitcoin wallets. If you cannot open the 7-zip files, you can download 7-zip, just Google 7-zip, and this is the program. And the other program that I used was this program. So now you know where to find those programs. Notepad++, 7-zip, here is our script. This is Python that we need, and Hashcat. So now we have downloaded everything that we need to do this trick. So we gotta start by installing Python. That's the first thing that we have to do. Open Python, run it. We're gonna do this together. Press next. Uh, let's install it on Python 2.7 on the C drive. Let's press next. Make sure that you select this here because this at python.exe is going to make it a little bit easier for yourself. What this does is we can just write Python in a command window and it automatically knows that it should start Python 2.7. Add this. Let's press next. I will show you what that actually means because in a couple of my videos I have showed you guys that we can enter things in our environmental variables. And let's open our control panel again, control panel, and I'll show you what happened. First of all, you gotta know that we have installed it on our C drive. We have this folder here, Python 2.7. The thing that I just selected was say that this folder needs to be preloaded in command prompt. And you can do that manually, so you don't have to do that in the installation. And if you want to do that manually, you have to go to system, advanced system settings, press environmental variables here. Here in our system variables down here, there is path and path means that it's automatically being loaded into command prompt. Edit this and we will see that it has been added to our path. It's up here. A small thing for you guys to know is I also have Python 3.6 installed on my computer. As you can see here, Python 3.6. Python 3.6 gets started by python.exe as well, but you can change the name. I changed the name of the file Python so originally it looks like this, but we can get some problems because here is Python and we have in Python 2.7, Python 2. You see Python 2.7 here and it's also named Python.exe. So one of the two should be renamed if you have multiple Python installations. So let's change this one and let's change it to 3.6. Now we can write Python 3.6 in command prompt and it will automatically know that we need this file. And if we just write Python, it knows that we need the Python 2.7 file. It's just just for you guys that have multiple installations. If you don't have multiple installations, you can just skip this part. Here, see Python 3.3, I have Python 3.3.exe. Let's unzip the hashcat. You know, 7-zip, extract it to hashcat 4.1.0. You need to make sure, if you wanna use hashcat, that your NVIDIA driver is up to date. And they say it here, if you use NVIDIA GPUs, make sure that it is 3.6.7 or later. Let's continue in our tutorial. Let's just copy or move this Bitcoin to John.py file into our Hashcat folder. We don't have to do this, but I want to collect all the files in one folder. We have our Bitcoin to John.py here and we have our wallet here and we have our Hashcat over there. Okay, let's open command. Go to start, type CMD, command prompt, and let's choose to run it as an administrator. If you have Windows 10, you can pin it to your taskbar so you can always open it. We want to navigate to this folder over here. This, if you click this address bar here, you will see the exact path, as they call it, of this directory. So if we copy this, this c double dot slash user slash your username, if you copy this line, go to the administrator command prompt and press cd for change directory and right click to paste your copied line. If I press enter, now we are at this folder. So that's the same line as we see here. To make sure, press dir for directory and you will see whatever is in the directory. And you already see that we have our bitcoin to John the pipe file that we just created here and we have our wallet.dat file over there. Okay, so we are in the right direction. So what we're gonna do now is use the bitcoin to john the pie file. And the way we do that, because of the fact that we just added Python to our system variables, we can just write Python, press space. So now it knows use Python to open bitcoin to john.py and we want to use that script on our wallet. So space and then wallet 
dot dat. And what this script is gonna do is just give us a hash file, nothing more. It's not brute forcing it. It cannot do anything with it because our file, our wallet dot dat file is still encrypted. So it is pretty safe. Like there's no way that this file is, can do you any harm. What it does is it will give you a hashing file as you can see in our screen here. So I have to make it a little bit bigger. We have to select, so select everything, press enter on your keyboard. That is copy in command prompt. Let's go to our hashcat folder and let's create a new text document again. But now call it our wallet hash.txt. Open this file and inside this file, we paste the hash output that we got from Bitcoin to John. And make sure that it is all on one line. Delete this part and delete that part. So now it is just one line, one hash on one line. So don't cut it because it needs to have one line. This is the hash. Let's save that file. Make sure you have saved it in the same directory as hashcat. Now we know that we can use this hashing file. And as you can see here, this is the hashing of our wallet. You know? <laughs> okay, looks like a cat. Let me show you how hashcat works. So let's start by opening hashcat. And you can do that as you see here, hashcat 64.exe. So that's how you open it. You hashcat64.exe, press space, double dash, help. This will give us a help menu. It's pretty big. It might be a little bit intimidating big. Let me explain how this works. I did explain it in my last tutorial, but we're gonna do it again. So let's scroll all the way up. It starts with options. These are the two important options, the first two. M for hashing type and A for attack mode. You can write dash A, but you can also write double dash attack mode. But A is easier, it makes it faster. Here is an example. A3 means attacking mode number three and M means hashing type number thousand. So let's go down. Our next list are the hashing modes. Like we just said, hashing mode 1000. These are all the hashing modes that you can see here in the screen. We need to use a hashing mode for our wallet.dat file. Let's go down, let's skip all these things. And you see down here is Bitcoin, Litecoin, wallet.dat. So a Bitcoin derivative wallet.dat file. And we need to have made a hash out of it. We just did it. Output files, not important. Attacking mode, we're gonna use brute force, number three. Here are the character sets. These are information that you give to Hashcat. And let's check this line over here. So for instance, this one, it says brute force attack on the hash type MD5. And this is how you give that command. So we gotta make a command that looks a little bit like this, but we're gonna change some stuff. We are gonna use A3 for a brute force, but we are not gonna use hashing mode zero. We need to use hashing mode that we have up here. And that is 11,300, the Bitcoin Litecoin wallet dot that hashing mode instead of example zero dot hash we are going to use wallet hash dot txt that file over there these are the brute force attacking modes as you can see for each character it says question mark a here at the character sets question mark a means the same as question mark l u d and s so the same as l u d and s so it's going to choose all the normal letters the capital letters the digits and the special signs that's what it's going to try so let's set it up we're gonna do this, we can do this. We're gonna do it first try. Remember the password that we just created? It was very simple, I don't even remember. I think it was bit, am I right? It was three letters, just simple. So write down hashcat64.exe to start hashcat. Then we say we want an attacking mode number three, the brute force space. Then we say we're gonna use hashing type of 11,300. That was, you know, this, Bitcoin 11300. We're gonna use this hashing mode on our wallet hash.txt file over there. So let's type wallet hash.txt. We wanna use brute force. So we don't know what, we just know that it is either a small letter, big letter, a number, or it is a special sign. We don't know, but we're just gonna give it a, a, a. Three A's should be enough because I thought it was a password of three numbers, letters, three characters. Press enter. You're supposed to see this screen. It shows us that it knows that we have a GeForce GTX uh, 1066 gigabyte. And uh, the problem with Hashcat is that Hashcat can only use one quarter of your uh, GPU. That's just something uh, with Hashcat. So that's why I prefer using BTC Recover because it uses your CPU. And in this case, it is way faster. If you see the screen, you can press the S for status. And as you can see, it thinks that it's gonna need at least 12 minutes. So 12 minutes for only three, three letters, it's not fast. 
But as you see, it is working. It is trying it right now. It is using our hashing type, Bitcoin Litecoin Wallet. That this is the hash. So as you can see here, it starts with Bitcoin 64. And the reason why it takes so long is because Bitcoin, Bitcoin's encryption is so strong. It's way stronger than the MD5 that I showed you guys in the last video. It's so much stronger. You should not use this program to hack or do stuff like that because man, you need a super computer. You need a super fast computer. You need a cluster of computers. You need like 100 video cards. I don't know. And just one video card is not gonna be enough. Whoa. Did you see that? Did you see what happened? It did brute force it. It figured it out. Did you see? It knows that it is bit. It knows it. It did it. It helped us out. We did it. Woo! What it did now is it created a hashcat.pat file. See this here, hashcat.pat file? It saves all the hashes that hashcat did crack in the past. Let's say that you accidentally closed down everything and you're like, oh no, I don't know how. If we would rerun the exact same hash again, it would automatically know, okay, it's already in the pod file. You see, all hashes found in pod file. Use show to display them. Okay, let's try that out. Let's double dash show. You see this? It did crack it. And now you guys know how to use Hashcat on a Bitcoin Core wallet or Litecoin Core wallet. Even though I do, I do not recommend using Hashcat because as you guys saw, it was pretty slow and the options are limited compared to BTC Recover. So I do recommend checking out my other tutorials about BTC Recover before trying this. This should just be something for fun. I hope you guys did enjoy this tutorial and that you learned something new today. If you did enjoy this tutorial, let me know by giving it a big thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, I make these kinds of videos every once in a while. It's not always about brute force and sometimes it's something different. If you have any questions on the subject, don't hesitate and drop them down in the comment section below because I always answer all the comments. And if not, you can email me if you need some help with something. We did it again, as always. I'd like to thank you guys for being here with me and see you guys next time. <laughs> 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 Just to let you guys know, it's not going to be easy to do this on a 10 character password. And don't even try it on 12 or more, because it would take you centuries to do this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We did it. You did it. Sonic. Sonic the kitty cat. Goodbye.